All right, looking forward to this. First game was sort of okay, and the third game was the only one I ever played growing up, so let's see how this one is. Harry Potter lived at number four Privet Drive with his horrible uncle and aunt and their hateful son, Dudley. Oh my god. I don't understand how the edges of the trees can't remain transparent. It's not like the lampposts have the same problem or anything. Oh, what the shit? I have to play Harry wearing goggles now? This is worse than Dumbledore's glasses from the last game. Harry Potter must not go back to Hogwarts. Well, it's nice that the Harry mouths Potter move now, but Jesus he Christ, he looks like a puppet danger. almost. <laughs> and he never shows up anywhere else Probably in the game again. And shortly after, Harry's best friend Ron Weasley and his brothers Fred and George are all the houses connected to each other? The Dursleys would never be okay with that. They flew him to their home, the Burrow, where Harry spent the rest of the summer before traveling by flu powder to Diagon Alley. Even the shadows are bright squares somehow. Blots, where the famous wizard author Gilderoy Lockhart was signing his latest book. Great Scott, is that? No, surely not. It is. He fucking it's looks Harry blind Potter. for fuck's sake. I don't even know how to fix this either. Ladies and gentlemen. I don't really care what Lockhart has to say. I was actually intending to just make sure this game recorded properly and wanted to see if a lower bitrate would look okay, and it does for the most part. <laughs> Very enthusiastic, Jenny. Bet you love that, didn't you, Potter? Famous Harry Potter. Can't even go into a bookshop without making the front page. Leave him alone. He didn't want all that. Potter, Draco at least looks more human this time around. I suppose your parents will go hungry for a month to pay for all the books you're going to need at Hogwarts. It's the least I can do to help out the poor and needy. <laughs> Even Draco is like, yeah, that was a shithead thing to say. Oh, the glasses are back to normal. Hurry! Wait, how the fuck did you miss the train? You went shopping for all your supplies a half hour before the train was set to depart? flying car to work this morning. It's parked in Charing Cross Road. Okay, it's our only chance of getting to school on time. Although Draco probably missed the train too, so I expect to never see him again in this game. Being sure to check that no one was watching, Ron and Harry took off in the old Ford Anglia. Now all we've got to worry about are airplanes. <laughs> I can't see anything in here. Phew, that was close. I know, I that plane almost there. hit the moon. Uh-oh, I think the car's cussing out. So Come something on. powered by magic Come needs on. fuel and engine maintenance or something? You serious? Was it burning gasoline Stop. anyways just for the Stop. hell of it? Stop! Oh shit, sounds like you really got banged by some hard wood. <laughs> uh... Ron! Ron, where are you? Now there was a launcher window that said I could use a controller and it did detect my Xbox 360 controller, okay, so let's see how this does instead of a mouse and keyboard. Okay, let's see. Wait. Left stick turns the camera? No! Oh, le left stick moves me forward, too. Oh my god, the camera and body turning using the same stick is walking forwards? The right stick doesn't do shit. Neither do any of the other four primary buttons. Except one of the triggers lurches me forward slightly. Uh... And fuck this, I'll just use the mouse and keyboard. It's easier, I don't mind. Well, how do I get up there? Oh, okay, here we go. One of the first things you'll notice about the control compared to the last game, though, assuming you're using a mouse again this time as well, is 
that the control is vastly improved. You can also strafe to the left and right without having to move your mouse cursor and, by extension, your in-game camera in that direction, too. The camera doesn't really move up and down, though, unless you're aiming with your wand. That's sort of annoying that it doesn't give you vertical freedom regardless of whether your wand is active or not, but overall, the control, one of my biggest complaints about the preceding Sorcerer Stone game, is vastly superior in this game. You can also use your wand while moving, something else I missed being able to do from the third game. So you can do like a running spell cast of sorts. This is a save book. Walk into them to save the current state of your game. When you faint, that's interesting. Now they have an option to skip cutscenes. Well, that's actually pretty handy for players who know what a save book is from the previous game, and how it works to be able to skip over explanations that they don't need, although I probably won't be doing that here, it just, just because I generally don't like to skip over anything in these series if I can help it. Even if I don't think I'll need the explanation, there may be something weird about it that I can comment on anyways. I bet I can pass from Pendo on that luggage to push it to that ledge. It would also be nice if dialogue like that would just be cancelled if you already performed a certain action. Holy, this branch is squeezing me like a snake! Well, that was great. They barely gave you any time to clear the branch. A chocolate frog. Chocolate frogs replenish some of your stamina. Oh, I see. That may have been intentional as an excuse to explain the purpose of the chocolate frog's healing abilities. Now hold still, you chocolate fuck. God damn it. My fucking finally. Is this a secret wall? Alohomora can open up magically locked objects such as chests and secret doors. Didn't you literally just open a chest several seconds ago with the chocolate frog? Why would you tell me things I already know? Or were you worried the player would only know that they could unlock chests but not doors? Uh, you just... I don't know. Good job, Harry! Now, see if you can cast for a pendo on this branch to get it off me! I think I see a sensitive spot right there! Yeah, always aim for the belly button. Lupendo! Thanks, Harry. Much appreciated. Oh, well, that was anticlimactic. Oh, no! Why would you initially say, oh, no? It looks like it's coming back for you guys at first. Come back! Great. My dad won't be happy that I lost his flying car. Anyway, we better get a move on. We don't want Professor Snape catching us out so late. Not only does Lumos call light, it also reveals magically hidden things. Oh, I see. We're doing this thing again where everyone outruns Harry Potter and magically ends up somewhere without needing to to do climb over whatever. To jump. Run to do the I not proofread these the right scripts? What the hell? And how, the, how do you end up there so quickly anyways, for fuck's sake? I mean, like, you can't jump across all these ledges at light speed. I don't care how much magic you... Ugh. Harry, you need to get onto this ledge over here! Cast Flapendo to push the block towards him, and then... Use it to jump to Did I not just save you from a tree? I'm pretty sure I know how to use the spell for... Oh, well, that was fucking brilliant of me. Just walk right off the block. But yeah, I know what the fuck I'm doing, Ron. Especially since Quirrell seemed fine, practically giving me private one-on-one -on -one lessons while basically ignoring the rest of the class. What the fuck are you doing now? Oh, my bad, I missed that. Alright, you're fine. So those stairs are clearly there to allow you to walk up and down them and get from one place to another. Why would you ever need them to be retracted into the ground like that? I mean, sure, watching the steps erect themselves was cool, but what purpose does that serve? Is it a defense mechanism? Like Voldemort might try to return and attack the castle, getting through various magical defenses at the perimeter but will be stumped by a lack of stairs, 
that can only be revealed by use of the Flipendo spell that you learn as a first year. Like he couldn't just make the stairs himself, climb up a short wall, or fly. He can actually fly. Conjure something out of thin air to help him get over the ledge. I don't know. I'm nitpicking here, but I can't help it. I'm just... Uh, well, they fixed the control in this game, so I'm happy with that at least. Oh, and if you're like me and you can't read one thing and listen to someone talk at the same time and you're too lazy to rewind the video to reread what the narrator said, all he said was there's 50 bronze cards and every 10 that I get will help me give more health. And no hidden doorways there either. Uh, the rain has stopped. At least we'll be dry when we get expelled. What are you Come talking on. about? It's not like you dry off instantly when the rain stops falling. Although there's probably a spell for that, I guess. I doubt you know it, though. You only learned, like, five things last year. Oh my god, there's something on my hand. It's a fucking flea. I must have carried that back into the house after I pet the cats earlier today. Son of a fuck. Fucking flea interrupting my game for several seconds. Stupid blood-sucking piece of bubonic carrying shit. I hope Ron didn't get lost. He was literally leading the way and you went off to the side to jack some beans out of a chest and you only did this like 30 seconds ago. He's not far away. the stars yeah see he's over there just standing around waiting for you to finish running around in circles attacking objects with your wand oh another card it's all the way up there it's a nice night now the rain has stopped I don't care Harry Christ I guess I need to learn the Spongebob spell first. I can't do that. Yeah, disappointing. Open a secret door just to be cocked blocked by some goddamn roots. Wait, you learned Incendio last year. Why couldn't that have worked? Well, it looks a bit weird when I run sideways, but hey, like I said earlier, I'm glad I can do it now. That comes in handy when you're in a tight spot sometimes. Okay, surely I'm done getting in the chests that aren't mine now. Dormitory is just over here to the right, remember? <laughs> Why would you ever ask Harry if he remembers where his house dormitory is? Obviously he would remember, don't insult his intelligence, just be like, let's get to the dormitory before anyone finds out here that we're roaming around after hours or something like that. Actually, how did he even get in? The door shouldn't simply be unlocked, right? At least it's not supposed to be, right? Also, it's interesting how this main area looks pretty much the same as the first game. Which is fine, of course. Consistency between games in a chronological series is a great thing, but inevitably, computer hardware gets better and. The dormitory's up here, Harry! and better, so you want to update the graphics at some point and eventually maybe the layout too, so it gets that inevitable overhaul in the third game. Finally, there's the portrait of the Pink Lady. I like how they're calling her the pink lady instead of the fat lady in the game. Why would I have the password? Why would I have it? I've been with you since we got here. You guys are only now figuring this out. What's wrong with you? There you are. And Emma Watson saves the day. Right on time. I heard the most incredible story about you two getting expelled over a flying car. Oh, Marnie, please. We're tired. Could you just tell us what the password is? I'm so glad the mouths move now. So much better. It's good to see you again, Harry. 
Okay, watching her move in her portrait is like watching an animation of a foreign leader in the diplomacy box of most of the civilization games. Mom's furious, by the way. You two should hear about the bean trading system we've set up. It's based on Bertie Bot's every flavor beans. Fred, when can we go to bed? Can you explain this all to me tomorrow? Throughout Hogwarts. Some of us will occasionally have an item to trade. If you have enough beans, we'll trade with you. Where are we supposed to get all these beans? Harry! They're hidden all over the place. It's not hard to find them. Yeah, no fucking shit. I know you're tired, but god damn it. Fuck, do you not remember collecting beans from various locations throughout Hogwarts last year? Do you not remember collecting some beans while you return to Hogwarts tonight in an unorthodox fashion? How the fuck would you not know where to collect beans from? And that's where I would normally end the video, but there were a couple of things about the graphics that I found interesting. Several seconds into the first opening shot, you descend through these clouds, which I would guess is just a two-dimensional plane that's completely transparent except for the bluish-white airbrushed bits that make up the clouds. Now, if you're going to cross that plane as the camera descends to the scene below, the clouds will get thinner and thinner until they seem to disappear for a split second, similar to Saturn's rings here in Celestia, a space simulator program. So the way they got around this was to have a second transparent plane positioned perpendicular to the first one, with an almost completely opaque cloud obscuring the point of intersection, thus making the move from above the primary plane to below it much less visually jarring. Now, curiously, in my case at least, these cloud planes remained transparent while the trees and initially Harry's glasses had issues with their transparency codes. I'm not sure why there would be an inconsistency like that. If anyone has any ideas why some things would be properly transparent and not others, tell me in the comments, because I'm genuinely curious about that. The second thing here is the Fat Lady portrait segment. Most of the time she's displayed here is a still two-dimensional texture that's incapable of movement, aside from a sliding motion to open the doorway. So in order to show the actual animation where she greets Harry, the in-game camera had to cut to a different room where she's actually a three-dimensional shape like the rest of the characters. Now this particular screenshot was provided by a website called The Cutting Room Floor, and according to them, this room was positioned just above the entrance to the Gryffindor common room. I'll leave a link to them in the description, because it's pretty cool to go through and see what they found out about the internal workings of some of these games.